Hi, Taras Puskin here at the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. I would like you for a moment, I invite you to remember a time a long, long, long time ago, longer than any organism on this planet can possibly remember. There was a time on this planet a long, long time ago when <gasps> I couldn't do that. There was no oxygen in the atmosphere whatsoever. The world as we know it, it was a completely estranged desert wasteland compared to the green ball of saturated wriggling life that we enjoy today. This was the era known before oxygen uh, became introduced to our atmosphere. It was a land where there were only microbes that could survive in the world's oceans. There was simply no oxygen available for any crabs or lizards or humans or anything higher. That all changed uh, through a series of wonderful millennia and years when cyanobacteria, bacteria that were able to conduct photosynthesis, they were the first ones that were able to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and all the slurry of metals and nitrates and phosphates and all the other organics and inorganics, and they were able to fuse those using uh, energy from the sun that they were able to collect and a byproduct of this reaction was sugars that could be used as energy and oxygen. Now this process continued over a course of millennia where all gradually all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was replaced with oxygen. And while that was happening, a growing surplus of sugars became available in the world's oceans. Now two things happened as a result of that. There were other organisms that for the first time could have ambition. They could get bigger, stronger, and whereas they could consume and eat other microbes, some of them took a step beyond that. Some of them saw that little cyanobacteria photosynthesizing. Hey, hey, turning sun, light into life. And they ate them, but they didn't kill them. They kept that cyanobacteria inside their cell and eventually stripped it of everything that made it independent. Kind of like in the way that our kidney cannot act without us, but we cannot live without our kidney. And over time, this process called endosymbiosis was how all the algae you see behind me was created. All the different colors and shapes and sizes that you see, all the different color liquids are the products of these different microorganisms eating each other, in the case of the reds, uh, uh, multiple times, in the case of the greens, maybe only a couple times, and acquiring things that we would later call organelles or organs, chloroplasts, mitochondria, but these are really smaller organisms that they acquired, fused with, and became stronger. And through that process, they were able to photosynthesize ever more efficiently, think like a single solar panel versus a giant mile long array in the desert. And it was this process that brought oxygen to our atmosphere and inspired every other form of life that we will enjoy and eventually that we sprung from uh, as a result. So this is a quick video to describe the oxygen revolution and something else to illustrate why when I say all life in oceans and on land are the results of these algae, it's because they are. And the algae that we see today are basically highly derived, super complex, and novin fusion superior versions of those ancestral organisms which brought oxygen to us all and allow us all to breathe a little easier. We'll see you next time.